Today I'm going to show you how to create an online data input form for your Google Spreadsheet using Streamlit. With Streamlit you can build entire web applications in Python without needing to know HTML, CSS or JavaScript. I have already set up a spreadsheet for tracking vendor data and I will guide you through integrating it in a custom web application. This website will feature various input fields including select boxes, multi-select boxes, sliders, date inputs and standard text fields. And the best part? Once you hit the submit button, the data goes straight into your spreadsheet. We will go step by step to build this form using Streamlit. And I will also show you how to tailor the code to your needs. Not only that, but we are also going to deploy our web application to the internet. And if you want to check out the web app, I will leave the link in the description below. By the end of this video, you will not only have the input form up and running, but I will also give you the code to enhance your web application whether it's to update an existing entry, delete one or display all entries. All it takes to follow along is a basic understanding of Python. So without further ado, let us dive in and get started. As a first step, we need to get access to our Google Spreadsheet and Streamlit. To do that, we can use the following Python package. I will also leave the link to this GitHub repository in the description below. The first thing you want to do is to install the package. To do so, copy the following command to your clipboard and open a terminal or command prompt. Paste the command in and press enter. If you haven't installed Streamlit yet, you will also need to do that as well. And in case you already have it installed, I suggest updating it to the latest version. You can do that by running pip install streamlit dash dash upgrade. Okay, and with that in place, head back to the GitHub repository. Here you will find all the steps to connect Google Sheets with Streamlit. First, head over to the Google Developers Console. Once there, you will want to create a new project. Simply click up here and select new project. Name your project and then click on create. After the project has been created, make sure to select it by clicking on the button up here and then choosing your project. Great, now in this project, we will need to activate two APIs, Google Drive and Google Sheets. Let's start with the Google Drive API. Search for it and once you've found it, select it and then click the enable button. Okay, and now repeat these steps, but this time for the Google Sheets API. Just search for it, select it and hit the enable button again. All right, with that done, we need to create a technical user who can then use those APIs we just enabled in our project. Click on credentials and then choose create credentials. From the drop down list, select service account. And then give this service account a name. I will name mine Google Sheets Python Access. Since this technical user should have read and write access to your spreadsheet, I will assign the editor role. Alright, and with that, we have set up our technical user. Now, select that user by clicking on it. We will need the credentials for this user. To obtain them, click on keys, then add keys. Create new keys and choose JSON before hitting the create button. Okay, and with that, let me quickly navigate to my downloads folder and copy this JSON file to my clipboard. All right, now let's see how we can use this technical user in our Streamlit app. First, I will navigate to my project folder. Inside, I will create a new folder and name it .streamlit. Within this folder, I will create a new file named secrets.toml. And right next to this file, I will paste the JSON file we just downloaded. Okay, great. Now let's open this folder in VS Code and position the two files side by side. So now we have the empty secrets.toml file and the JSON file next to each other. With that in place, return to the GitHub repo and scroll down a bit and copy the provided snippet to your clipboard. Back in VS Code, I will paste this snippet into the secrets.toml file. Alright, the next step is filling out the details. I will begin with type. Simply copy it from the JSON and paste it into the toml. Continue with project ID and so on and so forth. Once you have completed this, your file should look like mine. Okay, and as a next step, copy the client ID from the toml file. This is essentially the email address for our technical user. And we now grant this technical user access to our spreadsheet. To do that, go back to Google Sheets. In your spreadsheet, click on share, paste the email address and hit send. 
Okay, and additionally, I will also copy the spreadsheets link to my clipboard and paste it into the secrets.toml file. The only field you do not need to edit is the worksheet. You can just leave it as it is. Alright, and after saving this file, we can delete the downloaded JSON file. Okay, and with all those preparations complete, we are now ready to create the actual web app. In my root directory, I will create a new Python file and name it streamnetapp.py. As I did earlier, I will launch this directory in VS Code. And now it's time to do some coding. First, I will import the necessary libraries. I actually overlooked the fact that we also need pandas for our app. If you haven't installed it yet, do so by running pip install pandas in your command prompt or terminal. Next, I will configure the title and subtitle. The interesting part begins now. We will establish a connection to our spreadsheet. It's as simple as writing st.experimentalConnection followed by the section name and the connection type. With this, we can utilize the connection object to fetch all existing data from our worksheet. You can do this with the read method and specifying the worksheet. In my case, I named my sheet vendors and I will be using the first six columns from it. By default, the data retrieved via the read method will be cached for 60 minutes. However, for our application, I will set the time to live, so TTL, to 5 seconds. Ok, and this line of code will return the spreadsheet data in a pandas data frame. To ensure that we do not have any empty rows, I will use drop an A on the data frame. Ok, and before we go much further, let's test things out. To do so, I will display our data frame using st.dataframe. After saving the file, I will navigate back to my terminal and launch a Streamnet app using Streamnet1 followed by the Python file name. Ok, and now we can see the spreadsheet data within our app. To verify, let me quickly check the spreadsheet's entries. Great, so this seems to be working. As a next step, let's create the data entry form. For that, I will remove the data frame display. And instead, I will define options for business types and products, which I will be using later in my selection boxes and drop down lists. So, first, let me type some business types, and then also a list of products. With that in place, let's create the user form. I will quickly code out the entire form and then I will explain it. So within my form I have included different elements. A text input field, selection box, multi-select box, slider, date input field and a text area. So altogether I have 6 input fields, which are exactly also the numbers of columns in my spreadsheet. You might notice that for the business type I have set index to none. This means there is no default options. So, user must take a selection from the business types. In the moment you will see exactly what I mean. And both the business type and company names are essential fields. I have indicated this with an asterisk. I have also included a markdown field at the bottom to explain the mandatory nature of these inputs. Lastly, we have a submit button. When that button gets clicked, a simple user message will be displayed. Alright, so now let's see how our form looks like. I will head over to my app and give it a refresh. Now I can see our form with the different selection options. And currently, if I'm just pressing the submit button, it only displays a message. That's not exactly what we want, but it's a great start. So in the next step, let's actually add this data to our spreadsheet. Before we do that, I want to ensure that all the mandatory fields are filled out. If either the company name or business type is missing, I will display a warning message and stop the app. Next, I also want to ensure there is no existing entry with the same company name in our spreadsheet. Remember, our existing data is stored in a pandas data frame. Using pandas, I can quickly check if the column company name matches the input from the company name field. If it does, I will display another warning and stop the app again. Ok, and once I've passed those checks, I will create a new row for the vendor data. Essentially, I'm just constructing a new data frame using the submitted data. And it's important that the column names in this data frame are the same like in your spreadsheet. And for the products multi selection, I will convert the list into a string and separate each entry with a comma. Additionally, I will also format the date into a string. Now, with this new data frame prepared, I will combine it with our existing data. To do so, I will use the pandas concatenate method inputting both our existing data and the new vendor data. 
and I will name this new data frame updated df. Okay, and the next step is pretty straightforward. We need to push this new data frame to our Google Sheets. We can do this by using our connection object and running the update method on it, along with the updated data. And once that is done, I will show the user a success message. Alright, and that's basically it. So, before I actually submit new data, let me first see if my checks are working. When I hit the submit button, it will be prompted to fill out all mandatory fields. Okay, so this is already working. And if I use a name that already exists and try to submit the data again, I will get another warning. So those checks seems to be working. Next, I will actually submit a new valid entry. After I have filled out all the fields and hit the submit button again, we will get a success message. And of course, we can also validate this by going back to our spreadsheet. All right, and as you can see, we now have our new entry here. Great. Now that this is up and running, the next step is to deploy this app online. We need to let the server know which libraries it should install, and we will do that using the requirements.txt file. Within this file, you will list all the libraries necessary to run your app. In my case, it's Streamlit and the Streamlit connection for Google Sheets. Also, it is super important not to push the credentials of your technical user to GitHub. So, therefore, I'm going to set up a gitignore file. In this file, I will specify the path to my secrets.toml, which is in my .streamlit folder. Alright, and with that sorted, let's push now this code to GitHub. And from there, we can then deploy it later to the Streamlit community cloud. And to do so, I will use VS Code. First, I will initialize a new Git repository in the project folder. Once that is done, I can publish it to GitHub under the following name and make it a public repository. In this repository, I will now commit and push my changes. Ok, and moving on, let's deploy this GitHub repository to the Streamlit Community Cloud. Just Google Streamlit Community Cloud, sign in into your account and click on New App. On the next screen, select your GitHub repository, the branch, which is most likely main by default, and the name of your Python file. Optionally, you could also modify the app URL if you want to. After inputting those details, you can click on the deploy button. It might take a short time, and when it's finished, you will most likely encounter an error message. But don't worry, this is totally expected, since we didn't provide the login credentials for our technical user. We can sort this out by heading to Manage App and diving into the settings. Here you will find the Secrets tab. This is where you will need to drop the contents from our secrets.toml file. So let me just hop back to my project folder, grab everything from that file, and then paste it in here. Great, and with that done, I will click on the Save button. It might take a moment, but your app should reload automatically. And as we can see, the error now disappeared. Now, for our final test, I'm going to input some data into our form and then hit the Submit button. So, when I switch back to my spreadsheet, we can now see our new entry here. Alright guys, and this is how you can create an online data entry form for Google Sheets. What we have covered is really just the basic entry form. Of course, you can enhance this app with more functionalities, just like I have done here. For example, I have included a selection box at the very top of the app. In there, you can either select to enter a new entry or to update an existing one. And if you ever want to delete an entry, that is also possible too. If you are interested in the code, it's available in my GitHub repo. And if you would like to have a separate video on this, let me know in the comments below. Also, it is probably a good idea to secure this web app so that not just anyone can input random data into your spreadsheet. A way to do this would be to use a Streamlit Authenticator package which lets you add a logging screen for an additional layer of protection. Again, if you are interested in a tutorial on that, let me know in the comments below. Ok, and as always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.